Okay, so now we're going to work through two examples about this new definition of the trigonometric functions of any angle. Let's look at example number one. It says, find the trigonometric functions of an angle in standard position that goes through the point minus one comma minus the square root of three. Okay, so let's do it over here. So let's first draw Cartesian plane. And let's draw such angle. What do we know? We know um, the, the point through which the terminal side goes through. Remember, the initial side should always be here. Always. And so now, if they tell me that uh, the angle goes through this point, what that means is that the terminal point, I'm sorry, the terminal side goes through this point. So let's locate this point first. It should be more or less, it's going to be minus 1 minus the square root of 3, approximately here. This point is approximately this one. It's just a sketch. And so my terminal side goes through this point. There you go. Okay, perfect. And now, uh, let me draw, by the way, what could be, how can I draw the angle? Can I know? For example, could it be this one? Yeah, right, because this angle begins here and ends in this terminal side, which goes through this point, so that, that angle would, would be perfectly good. But also, it could be this one. You see? Because it, it, it satisfies also the same, the same two sides and the same terminal side, etc. So which one is it? You cannot know. And it's not, it's not relevant to the solution of this problem. But so far, you cannot know. But it's not important to know yet. Well, let me, let me stick to the blue angle. Just because I want. But I don't know that, that this is in fact the angle. Okay? I, I just want you to be sure about that. Okay. And then, I, re, I, uh, I go... To my definition of, of the trigonometric functions, remember it's it's this: the sine of theta is equal to y over r, the cosine of theta is equal to x over r, and the tangent of theta will be equal to y over x, where y, x, and r have special meanings. What is what what are they? X and y are the coordinates of this point you see this is the point that well in this case they chose it for you so you, you didn't choose this point but they're giving you the coordinates so we already know that x is equal to minus one that y is equal to minus the, the square root of three and how do we find r that because that's all we need now in order to be able to calculate the trigonometric functions of theta so how do we know r? It's rather simple. What you do is this. You always try to create a triangle uh, in the same way that we have been doing it. You see, you always draw perpendiculars to the to the to either the x-axis or the y-axis. In this case, I'm going to draw a perpendicular to the x-axis, like in such a way. Uh, I need to erase this because I want clarity in the diagram. And now if you notice, since um, since I know the coordinates of this point, it's minus 1. It's minus 1 because it goes to the left. And then minus the square root of 3 because it goes down. But basically, that tells me that this side of this, of this triangle, this side has a magnitude of 1. Okay? This triangle has a magnitude of 1. As a coordinate, this point has a coordinate of minus 1, but if I just look at this triangle as a geometric figure, 
I need to realize that the length of this catheter is 1. I cannot say that the length is minus 1 because length, lengths by definition are not negative. So I need to say, okay, the length of this catheter is 1. And the length of this catheter is the square root of 3. You see? And now, since I have both catheteri of this right triangle, I can calculate its hypotenuse. And what do you know? This hypotenuse is actually r, which is the distance from the origin to the point, um, to this point p, okay? Let me call it p, point p. Okay, so that's it, guys. You have, you have both catheteri, and you want to get the hypotenuse. So what do you do? You apply the Pythagoras theorem. R squared equals, in this case, 1, 2, the square plus the square root of 3, 2, the square. So we get R squared equals 1 plus 3. And so we get R squared equals 4. And so we get that R equals 2. Because I take the square root of that. That's it. Why not minus 2? I mean, you, some of you might be thinking, well, I have two solutions. I have also minus 2. Because 2 times 2 is 4, and minus 2 times minus 2 is also 4. Well, yes, but in this case, this has no meaning. Because, I repeat, we're talking about the distance from the origin to the point, and there is no, I mean, it's meaningless to say that the distance is minus 2. So, you see, you have to interpret the mathematics. The mathematics itself uh, won't give you the interpretation. Okay, so r is equal to 2. And now we have all the ingredients, x, y, and r, in order to calculate the trigonometric functions of all, uh, uh, the, all the trigonometric functions of this angle theta. So that's it. You just do this. Sine of theta is equal to y over r. So it's going to be that. Cosine of theta will be x over r, so it's going to be minus 1 over 2, and the tangent of theta is y over x, so that's going to be minus this, minus this, over minus 1. And we're done. Problem absolutely completed. Okay, so that's how, that's how an example like this works. Okay. Now, the other. Read it, please, on your own. We have the following. It says, um, example number two. Well, give me a moment. Okay. If the tangent of an angle theta is equal to minus three-fourths, and theta is on the second quadrant, find all its trigonometric functions. One more time, let's draw the Cartesian plane as well as you can. Remember, draw these arrows, and now you know what they mean. They're not just for so that this thing looks, looks nice. No. Um, and let's draw, well, uh, yeah, let, let's draw this angle. It's theta, and we are told that it's on the second quadrant. So let's let's draw it approximately. You will always draw most of the times. You will always draw approximations of these things. So it's good enough that you do this. This is initial side, and the terminal side is over here. Where exactly is it going to be here or here? Or here, it doesn't matter, just draw it there, okay? Just draw it in this second quadrant, that's enough. Terminal side. Okay, and so, one more time, uh, we might have, we might have theta going in this direction. This could be theta, but theta could also be this. You see, because both angles comply with this, both angles satisfy this context, and even this other angle. Look, there you go. You see, all those angles comply with this, with this context. But let's stick to the first. 
Okay, so what do we know? We know that this angle is theta, and we know we know this information. We know that the tangent of theta is equal to minus three fourths. This is a fact. We know this. And what are they asking us? They are they're asking us, hey, you know what? Find all the trigonometric functions. Okay. So I need to find also the sine of theta and the cosine of theta, which by definition are y over r and x over r. What are y, x, and r? Okay, they are the following. You choose any point over here, any point, and this point has coordinates x, y, it has a distance r from the origin, and that's what those things are. Those things are x, y, and r. Okay, so, but in this case, if you remember, if we also write the definition for tangent, Remember the tangent was y over x. And so basically, since they are giving me already this, this fact, then I can choose the point um, minus 3, comma 4. Okay? As the point uh, over which I'm going to draw the trigonometric functions. This point. I'm going to choose this point. Why? Because by choosing this point, minus 3, comma 4, I am actually, no, uh, no, sorry, it's going to be minus 4, comma 3. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Minus 4, comma 3. Why? Because by choosing this point, I would be uh, complying with this fact, with the fact that the tangent of theta is equal to minus 3 over 4. Why? Because I've chosen x to be minus 4, and y to be 3, and therefore the tangent of theta being equal to y over x is going to be y, which is 3, x over minus 4, and therefore I would be complying with this fact. The tangent of theta, according to this chosen point, minus 4, comma 3, has its tangent equal to minus 3 over 4. So I can choose this point. And some, other, uh, some of you might be thinking, well, why not any other point? Because it makes no difference. It makes no difference. As, as long as it's on this terminal side, it makes no difference what point you choose. Maybe I should explain that better. I'm going to try to do that as a bonus, okay? Why it makes no difference uh, what point you use? I'm going to explain that in a bonus. Okay, so you have this. And basically, we have, we have discovered that we have x. We have already nailed down x. We have nailed down y. And as long as you have two of these three components or these three values, as long as you have two, you can always, always get the other one, which in this case is r. Why? Because you can always do the triangle. You can always go like, okay, let me draw a perpendicular to the x-axis. And so we have formed a right triangle with these two cathedrae and this hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, we call it R in this case, which is the distance from the point to the origin. This cathedrae, uh, what is the length of this cathedrae? It's going to be 4, according to this point. The length is 4. And the length of this cathedrae is 3. You see? So basically, we can calculate R. Okay, calculate it with the Pythagorean theorem, and you will find that it's 5. You can stop the video, calculate this thing, and you will get 5. And that's it. We have found R, and once we get these three things, that's it, that's it, guys. This is pretty much the whole, the whole thing, you see? Finding these three things, X, Y, and R, and therefore you can calculate all the trigonometric functions quite easily. So the sine of theta is going to be equal to y over r, which is 3 over 5. The cosine of theta is going to be equal to x over r, so it's going to be equal to minus 4 over 5. And we already have the tangent of theta 
they gave it to us, which is minus 3 over 4. And that's it. This concludes the problem. These are my solutions. And that's it. Now, I got a question for you. Try to think why. Why did they have, because, you know, this may sound a little weird to you, this information. And theta is on the second quadrant. Why did they have to give us that, that information? Why? What, what if they didn't give us this, this information? What if all they said? You know what? The tangent of theta is equal to minus 3 fourths. Find all the trigonometric functions of this angle. Try to see why this is ambiguous and we could not be able to solve to solve this problem without this information that i just crossed try to understand why okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that as an exercise okay guys so i'm gonna stop it right there you have two examples that are gonna be very similar to the ones in the workbook and thank you and see you later